Hello, let's get started. Punctuality is a virtue, which is something I've decided to start saying. My name is Henry Hertz, and I'm very proud and humble to welcome everyone to the Netflix Norseman panel for San Diego Comic-Con at Home 2021. Other than at the stoop, it's the most honorable thing you can do. Norseman is a hilarious historical comedy about inept Vikings with modern sensibilities. I fell in love with the series from the opening scene, which though it takes place on a Viking longship, feels very much like we're watching a disgruntled airline passenger. I hope this panel brings you more, brings more attention to Norsemen and convinces Netflix to shoot more seasons. For those of you who haven't yet enjoyed the show, here's a one minute series trailer. Chief Norvid, I found something that may be in your interest. All right. You two backstabbed the entire village. Well, I was thinking to forget about everything and just start over. No. Orm actually has a point here. Yes. It's true, and that's it. You knew as a chieftain. Yeah! People might want to test you. How do you make this keep you from your rightful throne? Times are going to change. We will crush everyone who stands in our way. <laughs> Yeah, that's what we should do. Oh my Thor, that's insane. You know what? It's so important to be able to stop and just take it all in. Yeah. Good stuff. Okay, so now let's meet some of the Norsemen. Kore Konradi is, plays the lonely, inept chieftain Orm. Here we have a clip demonstrating his total lack of military prowess. Give me the boat. Give me the boat. No, no. Just let no. Arvid do it. No, 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 I'll do it. I'll handle it. He's my brother. Come on, this is really important. Orm! No, no, just one more arrow, just to be for, sure. For an audience sake, can no. Arvid do it? No, 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 no. no. It's, it's too late. It's too late. It's too no, late. If Thor and Odin had wanted me to hit, then I would have done it, you know, and I think that's uh, very important just to respect that. So, no. Who dares to brew their own chieftain? I'm really, really disappointed. It, you shouldn't boo your own chieftain, that's just a child's knowledge. Try firing an arrow with really cold fingers yourself before you start booing. Have any of you ever tried to fire an arrow with really frozen fingers? No, no, that's what I thought. It really has a huge effect. So, but... Love that. Okay, so... Um... Cora, your portrayal of Orm is simultaneously empathetic and despicable, sad and funny, power hungry, and desperate for friendship. You are the Michael Scott of Norheim. Uh, how did you manage to create a character who people want to root for and against at the same time? Um, well, I um... I think it's basically down to a lot of the a lot of it has to do with the writing and the, and the way the, the directors are so uh, mad and crazy and silly and childish at the same time. So um, uh, when I auditioned for the part, I thought that uh, I just thought that this was a character that I really I wanted to go down on my knees and beg to get the part um, because I I the, so many things that I liked that was already there and they the meeting with the uh, both the and Yoni was so. Uh, nice and fun and uh, I got the sense that they thought that I could bring something into the character as well and I have a, probably a lot of things from my childhood as I've mentioned before uh, in different settings where where I um, wasn't actually chosen on the on the team for sports and things like that and I was always the last one to be picked and they knew that I couldn't handle throwing a ball and stuff like that so there, there are a lot of things that I sort of remembered from my past as in childhood as well when when uh, when I read the script, I just thought it was so funny. Uh, and I suppose if you if you defend the character that's evil and mean, 
maybe there's some truth that comes out that people people like as well. I, I, because I miss the character when I'm not playing it. I miss uh, I miss playing one. So mm. there must be we something that him. at least I like about it. Yeah. <laughs> By the way, I want to point out to our viewers that Corey obviously speaks Norwegian and English, and he speaks English with a British accent normally, but he obviously speaks English with a Norwegian accent for the show, which is pretty cool. Absolutely. This is no problem at all. Um, Marianne, uh, Marianne Ottesen plays Hildur, the ruthless wife of Chief Olaf. Uh, in this next clip, she sensibly demonstrates good hygiene practices even before COVID. Yep. You wish to know if your husband, the chief, didn't survive? Yes. <laughs> Does that mean he will survive or die or? <laughs> the gods are not ready to receive him yet. Oh, that's great news. I was really worried. I mean, he's laying down in the house with his guts basically hanging out for everyone to see. Hmm? You must drink from the prophecy pot if the prophecy is to be true. How many have spit in here before me? I mean, I'm guaranteed to be sick if I drink that. Maybe that's just how it works. Seriously? Don't hate the player, hate the game. Agree, but can I ask you one question? Do you personally see to it that these prophecies come true? No, I don't control the future. The gods do. I'm merely a messenger. Drink, come on. <laughs> but if you don't have any influence, I'd rather not drink that crap because, I mean, the result is already given. You can't quarrel your way out of destiny, Hilda. Drink and the prophecy will be fulfilled. Everyone drinks, everyone is always drunk. Yes, but to be quite honest with you, I think it's so strange that no one has questioned this practice before. I mean, it's not logic. But I'm sorry, I don't mean to make your job harder. Just drinking spit simply doesn't work for me. All right, Marianne, striking a blow for women's rights. Yeah. Um, Marianne, it was obvious to me from our last Zoom call that you have a great sense of humor. Um, were there some scenes where it was really, really hard to keep a straight face? Uh, uh, yes, of course. I really love to do this show, and I, uh, I have, uh, in my opinion, very good lines. Uh, uh, but uh, the biggest problem I have in this show is playing with Trun because uh, just looking at him, uh, it's impossible not to laugh. So that's my biggest problem. <laughs> not the lines, but just acting together with Trun. Yeah. Take that uh, as a compliment. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I guess that could be taken two ways. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Just look at his face. <laughs> I sorry, my, my, I, I, I lost my voice, so, so it's coming, it's coming back. So I'll try to speak. Thank you. Um, but also, you act with the uh, Trun, uh, even if the camera is on me, he's standing like this. So it's really hard. Yeah, as you know, we have a lot of kids. Uh, we got so many kids during this show, so I just have to try to keep him. Here, yes. That's Great. why I'm up in the attic because uh, I have to uh, get away from the kids yeah. in the apartment. So nice. Uh, Nils Jurgen Kolstad plays warrior Arvid. Uh, Arvid is skilled in battle and very likable, but he's not the sharpest sword in the longhouse, as shown here. This is where I come to think the big thoughts, like what's beyond the stars and things like that. No, no, more like uh, mountains, big rocks. I think about whales sometimes. Oh, he's a big thinker. Nils, can you tell us something about one of the other actors that viewers would have no way of knowing? The more embarrassing, the better. Uh, oh, <laughs> uh, that's... Um... <laughs> 
Thanks for the question. I you have yeah, yeah, that's a good idea. Yeah. Uh, you know, Trum, he's collecting his toenails. That's something no one else knows. That's horrible, Trum. Oh, I, I I stopped that like many years ago. I stopped that 20 years ago. So yeah, I was yeah, sure. just but about 20 when I stopped doing that. You stopped, but do you still have the ones you collected from 20 years ago that could be valuable on, on eBay? Well, yeah, it's a it's a long story, but uh, I had to uh, brush the dust of uh, a couple of them uh, some months ago <laughs> in, in a TV show or something. So, <laughs> Einstein Mockdenston plays loyal slave Kark. Uh, let's watch him try to follow a very difficult order. Time for the Atis tube. Anyone want to go first? Bjorn, you're the oldest. Maybe you should, should take the first jump. Well, if someone else wants to jump, it's, it's okay for me. Anyone else have the urge? No, no, no. Oh, it's fine. Go ahead. Jump. Okay, fine. If uh, if no one wants to jump, I I can go. It's a, it's a matter of honor, isn't it? Oh, yeah, the attitude is probably the most honorable thing you can do. Honor is really important, Bjorn. Yes. Yeah. You can just move a bit back there to give uh, Bjorn some space. See you on the other side. Yeah, see you. To Valhalla! Wow. Odvar, maybe you want to go next. I'm thinking, what's the worst thing that could happen to me if I don't do the Ette Stup? I mean, what's worse than being crushed? I, I don't know. I was, just, I was just ordered to take you up here. I mean, you're supposed to do the jump and, and, and spare your families the burden that is supporting you in your old age. Yeah, but I'm only 47. It's, I'm, I mean, it's not that old. I'm just going to skip the whole thing. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I'm not going to jump either. This is not my kind of thing. Anyone else want to jump? <laughs> I mean, come on, fellas. I mean, it's just not very tempting. Okay. I mean, I'm just a slave. I can't make you do anything you don't want to do, but right. uh... that was a tough sales job you had there. Uh... Einstein, I wanted to share with you that uh, someone, there's a Norse group, Norseman face, Facebook group. I think actually there's a couple of them and somebody wanted to marry you. So nice. <laughs> That's uh, wow. Uh, I mean, I'm already married, but, uh, but I don't think Kark is married. So <laughs> there's yeah. still hope I can lead a double life. Very good. Tron Fausa plays the arrogant Roman actor Rufus. Uh, here he is learning an important lesson about his new status as a slave. Uh, just one thing. Yes? I had a cape with me on the ship, or, or it's more like a cloak, actually, just without the buttons all the way down. But anyway, I gave it to one of your colleagues who promised to return it when we reached our destination. So, I don't know, maybe you can ask around for me, or? Nope. Come here. Nope. Oh, there it, there it, there is. Hi. He's the one. Uh, I'm the one who lent you my cape. That's my cape. Uh, this is mine. It's yours? Yeah. Well, isn't that quite a coincidence if uh, you and I happen to use the same tailor in Rome and have the same family crests? I doubt that quite strongly. Well, that is the case. Come on, not even you can believe that. And you're wearing it all wrong, it's getting dirty. You're wearing it like uh, an amateur. You don't, you don't like dirt. No. Who does? <laughs> Open your mouth. Excuse me? I... <clears throat> Open your mouth. Don't bite. Huh? Whose cape is it? It's, it's my cape. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> 
I have a theory, first of all, that this cloak scene is where Ragnar first gets his fashion sense. But uh, that aside, Tron, uh, I love hearing English spoken with Norwegian accent. Um, but to my ears, Rufus didn't quite have the same accent as, say, Leif and Hildur. Uh, did you intentionally modify your uh, accent to reflect the fact that your character was Roman? Well... Uh maybe a little bit i don't know uh, maybe he was a little more of a uh, what do you call it uh, international uh, guy so he had caught up some uh, some accents and stuff so uh, he's uh, maybe a little a tad more uh, um, uh, english accent than norwegian accent in his english but uh, i ha i had some I I remember Jonas uh, telling me, "Oh, you're too you're you're sounding too much American now, so uh, tone it down. So it's so it shouldn't be that like someone is standing completely out in the accent. Uh, yeah. Cool. Thanks. Yeah, I mean the only person who really stood out accent wise to me was the seer who we just saw with uh, Marianne. He sounded like a straight up British accent to me. But that's okay, those are seers, they're supposed to be different. Um, uh, Yunus Targesson and Jon Eva Holgaka are the mad geniuses who created Norsemen. They were utterly uncompromising and accepted nothing but spectacular results. They produced, directed, and wrote the show. Let's take a look at this fan favorite scene that showcases their very clever and hilarious dialogue. Are we it, Freya? What are those? Uh, the horns on your helmet, are they uh, simply um, decorative or are you going to use them to impale people or, or what? Horns happen to be the latest fashion. You can't walk around with horns on your helmet. It looks ridiculous. Because you're such a fashionista? Yeah. Or, yeah, yeah. Okay, so then you would probably know that fashion is about taking chances, experimenting, mm -hmm. daring to be bold, while at the same time, of course, you had to wear something that you feel comfortable in. Sure. Well, I sure wouldn't feel comfortable with those horns on my helmet. Me neither. <laughs> okay, so yeah, I can see that you've tried, but Arvid, what, what is this? What do you mean? This is no plan. It's an old man's clothing. You're so risk averse that it's painful to watch. Take a chance. Right. Okay. The helmet is a basic head cover, right? Yeah, yeah. But when you add some other material, like horns, it becomes something else. It's no longer just a helmet. It is something bigger, it tells a story, and that is what fashion is all about. Oh, I see you on the boat. I can promise you that horns on the helmet will never be popular. No, he doesn't look like a Viking. No. no. It's one of my favorite scenes. So um, Yoniva and Yunus, um, you wore many hats, even if none of them had horns. Uh, mm -hmm. What is it like to write, direct, and produce a TV series? In fact, it wouldn't surprise me if you forged all the weapons and sewed all the clothes. Um, uh, I mean, this is our like our first first big project. So, but it was it was pretty natural to 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 do all, to have like the full control of it since it, when we started writing it, it was so like, we were so engaged in it. And so um, it was, uh, I, 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 I felt that we had like total control over what we wanted and, and, uh, and to, to involve uh, another director or something just felt very odd and, and unnatural in, in the process we were in here, so. We, what we needed help with was uh, we needed uh, a good cameraman, like a DOP that could could uh, help us create the scenes we we needed and the backgrounds and the, like the the shots we needed to 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 get to get the to get the point across. But you know, apart from that, we we felt that we really knew what we wanted. So yeah. Um, Eunice, you, I think you knew most of the actors prior to Norseman, right? Yeah, pretty much. Not uh, Kore though, but, uh, and not Öystein, but uh, yeah. 
<laughs> most of uh, the rest of the cast we kind of knew from uh, previous um, stuff that we have made, like uh, from commercials and uh, stuff. So, uh, but uh, those two important characters we I had never met before we started this. Yeah. Luckily, they delivered big time for you. Yeah. It was. Yeah. Sure. It was, so I mean, this show is the cast, and 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 like you said, the to to be able to have a cast like this, and then have uh, you know all the people that that uh, with with the props and with the backgrounds and all of that stuff, just to to make that whole thing work, uh, is is kind of the. It's a comedy, but if it doesn't look like a drama when you turn it, if it doesn't look like a drama when you turn the volume off, it's it, it, the, the jokes won't work. Kind of like it has to feel like we're making Game of Thrones or Vikings for for this stupid comedy to 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 for the jokes to work really. They do, and I'm just curious. It's like a ship with two captains. You was there ever a situation where? Um, you two disagreed about your vision or disagreed about, say, a character's dialogue? I'd... Never. No, it's uh, very strange. We are extremely uh, synchronized. So uh, we think exactly the same stuff is fun. So uh, so no big disagreements at all. So uh, it's... I think every time when we we're, when we're record, doing a scene, we were like, if I had a pointer, and I was going to go over to Yago, Mariana, or whoever to, to address that little thing that I want to change in the next, uh, next take. You and us was already there. And I was like, did you, did you talk to me about this thing? And he was like, yeah, that was, that was my point. I mean, we are total synchronized on, on, uh, on pretty much everything. Yeah. Very cool. So you're saying Nils re needed constant supervision and correction? All the time. <laughs> All the time. Yeah. Good. Yeah, I hate to see this. Hate to say this in front of so many people. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, um, Kevin Kidd on set, baby on set. Sorry. Um, Jonas and Yoniva um, graciously shared with me some behind the scenes footage. I think it was shot by the fashion conscious Ragnar. So let's take a look at some of that. And then we'll ask some of the actors to comment. Yes, hey man, how are you? It's good. good. It's good? Yes. What are you going to do now? The big chase with the, the moon chase? in the background. Big chase with the moon? But the moon is not going to be the picture, but a lot of torches. People. Yeah. And me running down the hill. Torches and you, man. Torches and you. Torches and all of... All right, so Corey, um, how physically demanding was shooting Norseman? Um, I, to me, it was so strange because every time there was a scene, uh, every time the, the people came down from Scotland to rehearse the battle scene or anything, they just kind of looked at me and went like, well, so you're excused um, <laughs> because I was in I was in no battle scenes. And even the, the clip that we saw in the beginning where I shot with the arrow, the, the, uh, the stunt coordinator uh, from Sweden in season one came up to me and said, so are you the one playing uh, uh, the brother and are you going to shoot with arrows? And I said, yes. And he said, okay, we got half an hour. Do you want to come and practice? And I said, no, no, uh, I don't want to practice. And he said, well, they're going to start shooting and, and have you ever shot with a bow and arrow before? And I was like, no, and I'm not going to now. <laughs> I want the first shot to be really bad. So even, even Jonas, and Jonas, I remember Jonas standing behind the camera uh, and Jonas was saying, do you want to do some test shots before we start? And I said, no, just roll the camera. <laughs> so the first shot you see um, where the arrow flies through uh, and, and lands in the water, the big, the big where you see the whole crowd, that was the first shot, wasn't it? You know, it was I think that was the first one <laughs> where it just landed in the water. Uh, there was no physical thing, but there was a lot of chasing me around in season three and a lot of running, but I wasn't prepared. I just kind of started running. <laughs> so there was there was a lot of physical movement but there was no preparation whatsoever that, that's the fantastic thing about the, the character arm as well that he is supposed to be an empty he's supposed to not know anything so i mean it's really yeah unlearned, I didn't really stuff, unlearned stuff to 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 do arm i think <laughs> yeah and corey is so dedicated to his craft that he did no preparation yeah no i mean that to be fair he was like uh, he was preparing scripts all night. He didn't sleep for a, 
that whole period i remember you were like there was a lot of monologues and a lot of reading and a lot yeah. of rehearsing lines and and, and getting things. things up to speed yeah no physical exercise whatsoever <laughs> very good um so here's another behind the scenes clip Bro, he falls. <laughs> he falls. <laughs> I see my mom. Oh. What? Ah, no, 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 no. Problem solution? I don't know. I don't know if it's a problem. 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 I don't What's going on, Machine? Uh, there are two Rubios who are us to lunch. Yeah, I'm ready. Lunch, yeah. How are you, Korea? I can't get out of the rain. Can't get out of the rain? I can't get out of the rain. <laughs> it's impossible. It's impossible. Ooh. But it was a lot of fun today. A lot of fun. A lot of fun. It's like the, the Thor and Odin are, uh, are playing pranks. Pranks, yeah. Real, real pranksters. Oh, yes. Real pranksters, uh, tricksters, uh, doing a lot of uh, oh, yes, yes. <laughs> tomfoolery. Tomfoolery. <laughs> tomfoolery from Thor and Odin. Oh. My friend of the camera. It's your friend of the camera. It's your best friend? friend you want to join the train going here? No. What is Magnus! Magnus! Fore! Umbrella! 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 Do you want me to go here? Alright! Come on, come on, come on. I don't think you need to speak Norwegian to appreciate how awful it must be to try and work in a heavy rainstorm like that. Um, Marianne, uh, what was it like to work in all kinds of weather? Well, uh, as a Norwegian actor, you're quite used to working in uh, snow and rain and sun and everything. So I think we managed quite fine. Uh, yeah, we're Vikings in our hearts. So uh, we're used to all kinds of conditions. So we're. But a bigger problem sometimes, you know, on well, some days actually you had, you had actually snow and really hot weather and rain on the same day. And I remember we did some scenes in the first season. We had like snow when we shot in one direction and then sun in the other. And you can actually see that in some uh, in some uh, scenes that uh, the weather is changes all the time, especially on in the western part of Norway where we where we shot it. It's uh, it changes all the time. I'm very surprised what we got away with uh, in, when in the edit. Like it should be shouldn't work, but it but did somehow. I don't know how, but that day, that clip you see, so there, then the, the lightning struck like 20 meters away from us a couple of times. I remember that was the big issue. The lightning was coming down. So yeah, that's a horrible day. Oh my goodness. Yeah. And it's not just the people, the equipment, right? You don't want your cameras getting wet. Yeah. So Marianne, if, you know, if Norway is too cold for you, you can come visit Southern California anytime. It's sunny and warm here. I come anytime you just call and I will be there and I'm quite wow. tired of you again. So I'm ready for a new <laughs> Wonderful, wonderful. I really um, want to have some time off from this, so you just call. I thought you were going to say time off from Nils, but... Um, yes, yeah. but uh, he can have this and I will come to you. Great. Um, 
but of course you have beautiful children and I can understand you wanted to stay in Norway. I mean, Nils facial features are well, kind of great. Um, okay. Let's take a closer look at that beautiful face. Mm. Okay, man, what's going on? What are we doing? Just trying to look nice. Trying to look nice <laughs> in the yeah. sun? Yeah. yeah. It's been a ride uh, until this point. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. What's been Just... the most fun, you think? Uh, <laughs> So many fun things. So many fun things. So it's hard to mention. Hard to mention one. One. Can't. Yeah, because they're all so amazing. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, I'm not going to let you get away without answering that question. What are some fun, fond memories you have? Specific memories you have from shooting Norsemen? Well, those questions are, are really hard because it's true. We, it's we, working with me, isn't it? Yeah, it's working with you. No, but it's it's really true. We we had so many fun moments. It's it's, it wouldn't be fair to all the other moments to mention just one. So, uh, <laughs> it's, no, it's no, I, I don't know. <clears throat> You're a born diplomat. Well, but, uh, uh, a fun fact from uh, that scene is that's from the day when you uh, declined to be Orm's best man and you had been drinking heavily to, uh, to yeah, try to drunk. But it's that's or, from, you think? Yeah, yeah, you were drinking. Properly, you would drink have liquor. liquor. I think so you're wrong. Exactly that scene. That's so yet, I think. yet another actor who's so dedicated to his craft that yep. he's, he's willing to drink. Yeah, I actually wanted to try it uh, because uh, yeah. <laughs> the dialogue wasn't too hard. So I thought, okay, let's just um, drink as much as I can before the, the shoot. And uh, yeah, it's. I, I'm actually quite disappointed because I, I would. I was hoping I would see it more because I was, I was, I, I drank quite a lot actually, uh, <laughs> uh, but I don't think you can see it that well. But you can see, yeah, so uh, yeah, <laughs> it helped. I think some. you had to, you had to drink to to find the courage to say no to to becoming my best man. Mm. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So. He was bitterly disappointed. Yeah. Um, all I can say is you must have a very understanding wife. Um, so, speaking of couples, I have uh, another fun video to share. <laughs> <More? laughs> <Stop. gasps> Do you have a sex tip? Maybe. Maybe, yes. Maybe. I knew it. Mm. It's, uh, it's powerful. When you move, you move. Uh, yes. Yeah. So the sound isn't very good there, but hey Stein, what's going on in this video? Did you and Corey make a sex tape? Is he is he cheating on Torstein? Well, I think that's uh, kind of what happens after they cut. But uh, <laughs> but the thing is, I mean, Olm is probably the least sexually experienced person in the cast, except for maybe Kark, who really doesn't. I don't think he knows what sex is really. Mm. So that's. Orm trying to get sex tips from Kark. That's that's a non-starter. <laughs> I don't think Kark he's really out of his depth there. It's it's from the bachelor party, the sex tips, right? Yeah. Yeah. I mean you just called out stuff for us to do. <laughs> <laughs> but we were... was, it was Corda that started the laugh. laugh yeah, laugh. More. Stop laughing. Yeah, laugh that. That more. Was, uh... Stop. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> And uh, and since I have a lot of cock in me, I just follow these directions. <laughs> That's too much. Like it. So that all the friends would, uh, so all the friends would, we would think that we were having a good time. That was the yeah. Attention. <laughs> they were, the they were missing out. They were yeah. really missing Everyone out. Everyone who left. Yeah. So sad. <laughs> all right, I have another um, pair of best friends, uh, Orm and uh, Jarl Bjorn. Without, 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 no crochet. That's the best thing I can do with, the best thing you can do with your clothes on, as I like to say. Are you kidding me? Mm -hmm. Crocheting. Are you, are you making fun of me? Because you heard uh, that the crocheting is my number one passion. No, <laughs> uh, 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 no. Uh, you love crocheting. <laughs> More than anything. I, I always have some, some crochet work with me. Fantastic. Tell me more about yourself and, uh, and then we see how old I like you are. Well, I love uh, I love collecting worm worm wood. <laughs> no worms. Me too. Hmm? 
That's so amazing. This is the great Jan Bjorn, so much <laughs> like me. I've never felt closer to anyone before. Well, what a shame then that that is the end of me. Or we could have had lots. <laughs> we could have lots of contact moving forward. That's so true. You know, I don't like throwing big words around, but I feel best friend is in order here. I have a new best friend. <laughs> Look at how happy Orm was. Um, did the cast form a tight group that did everything together day in and day out until that group melded into one single organism with a lot of inside jargon and jokes that no one outside the group understands? I actually think so, yeah. Do you guys ever use show quotes with each other? I don't know. I think in, I think uh, you go there first, but not every time you say it out loud. I think it's, it's, it's easy to go there because uh, I mean, we all, we shot this, it was like going to summer camp, you know, we shot it on, uh, uh, up in the West coast of Norway. We we're all together in the same hotel. We ate breakfast, lunch, dinner together. We worked all day, you know, it was, uh, it was, uh, yeah, it becomes uh, something else than just showing up at the set and, and doing the thing and, and going home again. I think it's, uh, mm. it's a different way to work for sure. Well, you guys created something magical and I'm, I'm gonna ask the question that's on the, at the forefront of most fans' minds, which is, is there anything we fans can do to help convince Netflix to green light another season? Um, of course, I think uh, I think Netflix is probably on the forefront in the world of picking up what's going on on social media and and, uh, and monitoring what's going on. So if enough people want something, you know that puts pressure. But I don't know what the what the, what the possibilities are. But you know, there, I, we get a lot of that question. People are excited. We, I mean, we have a plan for a fourth season for sure, and and. They, if that could happen, you know, it would be fun. I think we're all, uh, yeah. If there was a fourth season, would it start after season two or would it, or after the prequel season three? Where would, uh, what, at what time would you put it? You know, we have a plan. <laughs> we can't share the details of that. <laughs> it's crazy talk. But uh, I mean, I mean, there's a lot to it's it's in it's in uh, we left off season two uh, in in a good spot for uh, to continue for sure. So um, yeah. Okay. So that might be something. Yeah. Uh, Tron, uh, did did you um, switching gears now to uh, did they ever? Uh, they said before that they were pretty much Yon and Yon, Yoniva and Eunice were pretty much in sync. But did you ever get conflicting direction? No, uh, I don't recall. They were pretty synced. Did Both you? In private lives and on set. Really. I, could you elaborate on something Marianne said earlier? She said that sometimes when she was speaking, you would try to, you, you were off camera, you were trying to make her crack up. Was that sort of your self-appointed job to go around and try and break up the, the scenes with some making people laugh? No, I, I'm not. Uh, I don't think uh, I do that for like on purpose. I, 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 I think I'm the I'm the incarnation of Marianne's tics, almost, almost, if you can say like she just starts laughing. And I sometimes start laughing uh, when I work with Marianne for no reason. So uh, it's uh, <clears throat> what is tvangs tanke in English? Compulsory, compulsory, um, compulsory. You, you can't help yeah. yourself. Oh, yeah, yeah, compulsory. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah. 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 so nice. uh, it's something. Um, I'm not trying to crash uh, any other scenes with other actors. Uh, it's uh, it's uh, just something uh, <laughs> uh, Marianne and I have. In common because we were working together a lot uh, previously. So uh, just want, want her uh, attention, I suppose. Yeah, yeah. That's right. We have an uh, we have an extremely connection. Yeah, yeah. chemistry is like this, you know. Yeah. 
So. But Tron is scaring everyone on set. He's always hiding behind something. He's always in the dark, scaring people. That's his thing. I love it. Yeah. Yeah. He loves mm -hmm. it. Yeah, he can spend like one hour hiding just to wait. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, 15 minutes max, I it's think. It's pretty yeah. long and it's pretty elaborate. And he's doing that out on this island we're filming. He's lying in the bushes waiting. If you're tired, you're going home, it's dark. Suddenly jumps out and barks like a dog or something. And in closets in your hotel room. <laughs> yeah, in the room in the closet, yeah. <laughs> yes, jumps out. That's commitment. <laughs> that. That's commitment yeah. to a role. No, that's, that's just being very, very silly. <laughs> yeah. So Corey, I understand that you have a interesting uh, project, not a Norseman project, but an interesting project with your uh, uh, Ibsen company. You want to tell us about that? Oh, um, I, I had this uh, had this idea that we're trying to fulfill. I had this idea because uh, Henry Gibson, who is the most performed dramatist in the world after Shakespeare, um, and he was from Norway originally, and. Uh, Ibsen has never been translated into, as far as I know, uh, into Klingon. And I just yeah. had this idea the other day that I thought maybe uh, Ibsen should be done in Klingon. So I've started a project to try and have uh, uh, Ibsen, Henry Gibson's, uh, one of his plays first for first time uh, translated into Klingon. <laughs> I don't know why, why that hasn't been done before. That's fabulous. I know. Crazy. Let's do it. Let's do it. Um, so, uh, Eunice and Yoniva, you are working on an animated series, Captain Fall. Can you tell us a little bit about that? Um, we can tell you that it's going to be out uh, next year, it's like uh, mid, mid to late next year. And it's an animated show and um, can't tell you too much about uh, what it's about, but it's, it's kind of um, writing is has been it's, it's 20 episodes we're writing and it's we just delivered the last one it's and it has been that same kind of feeling that when we wrote Norseman it's been that sort of energy doing it and and and, and being able to do exactly what we want really so uh, as like we said when we finished writing uh, Norseman was like if this fails this is just not for us so I think that that goes uh, goes with this project as well. If if no one likes it, if it fails completely, it's yeah. Maybe we don't know how to do this. Maybe we have just that one show in us. Yeah, so, I don't buy it. I think I think it's uh, we we are really happy in where we are in the process, and and it's uh, it's very fun. Yeah. Good. Um, so, again, a question for Yoniva and Eunice. Um, have you saved any of the show's priceless artifacts, like the map to the west, or the rune sticks, or um, <laughs> for yeah, we have some uh, we have some stuff uh, yeah. in our office, but uh, a lot of stuff has gone missing too. So it's uh, that's kind of a bummer, like the map to the west and uh, mm -hmm. a lot of stuff that I think was just uh, thrown away after season one or something, or it. Uh, I, we have we have the Jarl Varg's uh, hands, and we have we have some of the maps. We have the the Orm's porn uh, porn map or the porn. Uh, oh, you have that. I you think have so, that. Yeah. I think oh. so somewhere. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, <laughs> we have. Uh, I think we have a, a lot of stuff that we sent down to Horton, where they displayed it at the museum, the Viking Museum. Nice, yeah. Corey. Did you uh, did you steal one of the tent pegs? <laughs> no, um, what well, I have one, I have one item, and I it's the uh, the pine cone animal uh, from uh, from season three that I made. I still have that. Uh, that's the only thing that I, and I was allowed to take my the, the crochet the knitting. I was allowed to keep that, uh, but I gave it to uh, uh, a fan. So um, yeah, who was also a very good friend. So I have the pine cone animal. No, no other bad stuff. Um. So Yoniva and Jonas, you guys do a lot of things. And apparently in addition to writing, directing and producing, you also are musicians and actors. And I'm wondering, did either of you cameo in Norseman and we just missed it? Uh, I actually did in, um, I'm, I'm blacksmith. blacksmith. Yeah, in that when they, when y'all, when y'all, no, when uh, Torstein Hun is trying to burn uh, the blacksmith. 
I'm one of the blacksmith in the background, and I'm also one of the guys that tries to deliver uh, a prosthesis to to. Um, I actually give the good prosthesis to to the hidden yeah. secret. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. I and that was that. because we were in 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 Scotland and, and we were missing one actor and we were like, you know, that was either trying to fly someone from Norway or just do it ourselves. And and I I was the better looking one, obviously. <laughs> <laughs> Well, you know, it's funny because in that same Facebook group, somebody else, I posted that I was going to be interviewing you guys and we got the woman who proposed to Einstein, but we had some other woman say, ooh, Mr. Ever looks nice. Should should he play a role? So now I can tell her you have. Yeah, yeah. I'm a, it was a fabulous role. People said that was one of the best roles, actually, but, you know. You didn't want to overshadow people. your other cast, right? Yeah, yeah. So it's kind of interesting. We have polar opposites, in a sense, between... Uh, Nils's character Arvid and Corey's character Orm in the sense that Orm feels like a much more modern personality, be uh, comfortable in the in the 21st century, whereas uh, Arvid's character, uh, the character Arvid is pure Viking thinking with his sword. Um, you guys care to comment on the idea of these polar opposites? Uh, <laughs> what you just said, no. Uh, yeah, I mean that was the whole idea behind behind the uh, item. How to find how to find a, a, a character that that uh, is the opposite of what the Viking Age needs and wants, and you know the the what everyone knows about the Viking Age. I mean, the, like the stereotypical Viking is not uh, into to feelings and and uh, crocheting and and. Uh, you know, seeking friendships and you know all all that stuff that, that kind of sums up Orm, where where uh, where um, Arvid is kind of the epiphany of a Viking. I mean, he's a brute and he's strong and and he's um, he's everything the Viking Age needs then and there. So it's it's um, it's a fun contrast to play with and and it uh, automatically spawns a lot of of uh, ideas and 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 for for when you write this i mean it, it's it's easy to kind of to to navigate these uh, characters in, in in this show i i have the perfect scene in mind for illustrating the the point you just made arvid says this is the viking age armed conflict is kind of part of the game here what if someone attacks us mm. and orm responds your reactionary attitude is hilarious, Arvid. Who in their right mind would attack a village that is organizing the country's best and only summer play and is also building an installation? And then Rufus chimes in with his helpful, come on, Arvid. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I mean, that's, it's a lot of, it's easy, it's easy to, 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 to poke fun of, of that stuff and to kind of see the, the modern world in, in, in the, with those glasses on, yeah. Speaking of the modern world, I did you have you guys are Norwegian. I mean, you speak fluent English, but a lot of the dialogue reflects very modern American English and a very modern American slang. Um, mm. Did you have some uh, an American giving you tips on American slang? I mean, for efficiency, we had it translated as we were writing because we, the, the, you know, we were running out of time always. But we had a translation done, and then we went through the the English scripts together with the actors and 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 tried to, um, you know, tried to f find the words that that fit the most. And I mean, it's it's not that modern English, and it's it's um, it's it's to try to find those words that are pretty silly in Norwegian and see what the equivalent is in English. So, so it's not like, it's not always the go-to word we were looking for. It's, you know, to, you know, quota, you remember when we were doing those reads at night, you were like always going through your, uh, your urban dictionary or stuff like that, just to try to find a word that's silly enough to, to, to work with our show and, and uh, not the most obvious choice of, of words always. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it was fun. It was a fun quest. <laughs> How did you meet Jan Eva? Uh, I worked at uh, this uh, production company in advertising, and we were seeking a new employee. And uh, 
and someone met uh, your neighbor at a party and thought it was funny and uh, asked him to uh, apply for a job at uh, our company. And I was the creative director at the time. And uh, you had the interview with me. And I had the interview and, uh, and he nailed it. And, uh, <laughs> this was in and, 2003 though. Yeah, and it was very unusual at first when he started working at the company because he, was, uh, he talked all the time and was uh, extremely loud, but uh, I got used to it and uh, we have been working together since. And uh, I have become immune to uh, the constant uh, talking and the very loud vo voice. So, uh, so it has worked out. So as Humphrey oh. Bogart said, it was the start of a beautiful friendship. Yeah, uh, it, was, it was. Who would have thought? Well, mm -hmm. I'd like to thank all of you for your time and participating in this. I know that you know, Norseman fans will be thrilled to see this um, online. And uh, I'm so glad that this is the one good thing about the, the pandemic is that uh, we can do this via Zoom and uh, you don't have to sail all the way from Norway to Southern California. So. Uh, Thank you very much. Thank you, you for too. having us. Thank yeah. you for having us and be My safe. Time.